Leaky capacitors and failing batteries are just a day in the life when dealing with retro technology. Hi everyone, I'm Alan Gracia, and in this video, I'd like to show you the solution that I came up with for my vintage Apple IIGS. All right, let's take a look at what I got inside this box here. Uh, because in all these videos we talk about messing around with power supplies, everybody says, don't do what I'm doing on this video. And that goes double for me because I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to power supplies and mains voltage or anything like that. So in this box, I have um, some parts that I bought from Reactive Micro. Now, as with all my other videos, this is not a paid promotion. Uh, Reactive Micro has no idea that I'm doing this, uh, and I did purchase this, uh, these parts with my own money, so um, there, there you go. So the first thing we have um, is the battery holder. This is the battery caddy. So inside the Apple IIGS, when I first got this, we saw in that video where uh, I have a link in the description, I cut out the original battery. Uh, <laughs> it's still in place, so we cut that out right away. So this uh, battery holder is going to put two double-A batteries, uh, excuse me, two triple-A batteries inside this caddy holder, and this caddy holder is going to mount to the leads that I clipped inside the Apple II GS. So that's going to be a cool way to keep the CMOS clock uh, up and running. But the star of the show here is this piece right here, which is uh, some work that I had done off camera before this video. And this is the original Apple II GS power supply. Uh, that was inside this Apple IIGS when I bought it. Again, uh, the, I was the second owner. I bought it from the original owner uh, who had it since the 80s. But this here um, is the power supply that was inside the Apple IIGS. You see there's a new sticker on it. And um, this power supply has been completely upgraded by the fine folks at Reactive Micro. So let's take a look at what's going on inside this uh, power supply. And I'll talk a little bit about the service that I had done to it. Okay, let's take a look at this Apple IIGS power supply. Now, my original uh, intent for this video was to open this case uh, and remove this top piece so we can see the equipment that was loaded inside. So, um, honestly, there's two screws on the top of my power supply here. You just take those out. And in many of the videos you see on YouTube and other folks of doing their own repairs to their own power supply, there's four screws, two on each side, and then this, place, this piece just lifts off and then exposes the original power supply inside. However, on this particular version of this um, Aztec power supply, it is uh, model number 6990126, uh, we see here. Um, this is a variation of the, of the uh, power supply where um, there's only the two screws on the top and then the top piece continues on to the side here where it is held in with these metal tabs and clips and things. Um, and quite honestly, this power supply is in really good shape, and again, I don't know what I'm doing, and I was having difficulty getting this lid off. While searching for information on how to open my Apple 2GS power supply, I ran across the RetroBits channel over at YouTube. I'll have a link to that channel in the description below. As you can see, Matt has a variety of excellent videos about vintage computing, including Apple, Commodore, the Amiga, and Atari. Lots of great stuff going on over there. You definitely need to check them out. But the thing that got my attention was that Matt did an Apple IIGS restoration video, and he shows the inside of his original supply. And he graciously gave me permission to show his power supply here in this video. Reactive Micro has created a $70 DYI upgrade kit, which you can see here. For $20 more, there's a mail-in service available. The kit is compatible with all Apple II and Apple III power supplies. And this is what it looks like when the power supply has been upgraded. Okay, that's enough voiceovers. Let's get back inside the Apple IIGS. Let's get this battery installed, put the power supply back in, and button this thing up. So first we have the battery caddy, which we already talked about. And uh, we'll connect the red wire to the plus side of the, the battery terminal. Just slide that in like that. And we'll do the same thing for the negative side. do that for the negative side there we go slides right in and then we can just tuck the battery 
caddy off to the side as such. Now this normally will lot, will sit under the power supply when it's installed. I'm not planning on leaving the batteries in here long term, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just leave the battery caddy uh, off to the side. And uh, when I'm done playing with it, I'll pull it out. And with that seated, got to load some batteries in. These are just AAA store brand batteries. Nothing exciting. And now we'll have the completely refurbished Apple 2GS power supply. We'll slide this right back in. Just remember, there are three grooves on the back here, which go along to the back of the Apple 2GS here. So we'll just slide those in, sort of drop it in. Watch out for that plastic clip up here. And then we run the cable over to the back. Oh, and coincidentally, uh, the power uh, strip here, the little connector, is keyed. There's a plugged um, adapter here, so when you're going into the uh, the terminal here on the motherboard, in case you don't remember which way it goes, like uh, I'm <laughs> struggling to remember which way it went right now, uh, that key is there so you can plug it in correctly. So this is a little bit of a tight situation here, so we'll see if we can't gently, carefully get this reconnected without breaking anything. And there we go. That in just like that. We've got the battery in there. All right, let's go ahead and get the 2GS plugged in and set up next to the monitor. We'll put the cards back in it, uh, get it plugged in, and let's give this thing a test. All right, we have the monitor on, the Apple 2GS plugged in, but the power supply turned off, the batteries are in. Hopefully uh, there's not any fireworks, but we have a camera pointing at the computer just in case there is. And let's see what happens. Three, two, one. Go ahead and reposition the camera so you can see the screen and the Apple IIgs. We're booting up into, into System 601. So far, so good. All right, so the clock is reading 1209. Let's go ahead and reset the clock. All right, let's make this 2.38 p.m. And let's see here. I don't know if we can get uh, <laughs> 2023 in here, but let's make this uh, June, May, January, February, March, April. It's going the wrong way. All right, June. And as I'm recording this particular piece, it's June 11th. Been a been a while since I recorded the earlier segments, and let's make this uh, 2004. I don't know if we can go that high. It's 2020, 21, 22, 23. So June 11th, 2023. Let's see uh, what that does. Daylight savings time. Sure. Hit OK. Close this. Special. We'll do shutdown. It will shut down the computer, and then we'll power off. We'll give this 10 count. OK, 
Okay, that should be long enough. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Hey, 239, look at that. It kept the time. I guess the, the little battery pack works, and I connected it the right way. Imagine that. <laughs> Whoops, I realized after I just cut that shot <laughs> that the clock was not in frame. So here it is, 246, uh, Sunday, June 11th, 2023, 2.46 p.m., uh, the date format. So I just wanted to show you that this does hold time. So let's go ahead and try that again. We'll close the control panel. We'll go special, shut down. We'll shut down the Apple 2GS. I almost said the Macintosh. We'll shut down the Apple 2GS. And we'll go ahead and turn it back on. There's the beep. Here's the boot. Now we're booting off of the uh, compact flash card here. So there are no floppy drives currently connected. And that, that card is uh, simulating or emulating a hard disk drive. And after the power up, after shutting off the Apple 2GS, we see the 2.47 uh, p.m. did stick. So I just wanted to go back and make sure you saw that while it was in frame uh, with the clock. So we'll open, and here it is. So uh, we have the, the refurbished power supply from Reactive Micro. Again, if you do not know what you're doing or you, you, don't prefer, you prefer not to mess around with power supplies, mains power, I definitely recommend shipping this out or finding someone uh, in your area who knows how to safely do the, the recap work. Um, and then installing the, the battery pack with the two uh, AAA batteries to hold the clock while we're playing with the Apple 2GS and just being nostalgic for a couple days, it might be fun to, to have that up. But uh, I don't plan on storing the Apple 2GS with those batteries in there because if they do leak while I have them just sitting on the motherboard, um, that will cause uh, damage in the future. Don't forget to check out Matt's Retro Bits channel here on YouTube. Great people over there, and I do really appreciate them uh, allowing us to use imagery from their video in this video, so I do appreciate that. And as always, thanks for watching. Apple II forever, stay foolish. Leaking capacitors and failing batteries are just... Every... <laughs>